A group of Fox News hosts desperately try to prevent their audience from having to contend with facts presented by Jessica Tarlov that contradicts one of Fox News's favorite dishonest narratives. Let's return to the conversation we started yesterday about crime. I discussed in a segment yesterday the fact that contrary to the messaging you hear in much of the media, especially on networks like Fox News, the facts about crime in the United States tell a somewhat positive, a really positive story recently. And before diving into the clip that I want to show you another clip from Fox News, apologies for all the Fox News segments recently. My goodness, uh, or going through the facts about crime, let me provide my normal disclaimer as well as some context. First, the disclaimer, nothing I'm about to say in this segment is meant to invalidate your experiences with crime or to assert that there aren't problems that need to be solved. There obviously absolutely are tons of problems across the country and every day I advocate for elected leaders who I think can best solve those problems including on the issue of crime. Just like how the economy is getting pretty strong in part due to the policies of Joe Biden, but that doesn't mean I think there aren't still a bunch of economic problems. Same thing applies here. But if we are going to talk about solutions to problems, we first have to be honest about the facts of those problems. And that's what this segment is about, the facts about crime. Now, for the context, before playing the clip, Fox News is constantly telling their audience that Joe Biden is causing crime to spike in the United States. It's horrible Joe Biden's America. They broadcast stories on a nightly basis about shoplifting, murder, or whatever they can to fearmonger again about America under the leadership of Joe Biden. And during the pandemic era, we did see a spike in crime for what I feel like are pretty obvious reasons, the conditions caused by the pandemic, but they weaponize that to attack Biden and Democrat. But then now they refuse to give Biden credit. If you're going to blame him when crime spiked again for reasons that I think were outside of his control, then will you give him credit when crime rates start to plummet? And they are plummeting so fast and down so low that they're hitting pre-pandemic levels and in some cases, multi-decade record lows. And I'll give you the data on that after watching this. Jessica Tarlov, the one liberal host on Fox News is The Five, trying to explain this to her colleagues and them really not wanting to accept it. A big disconnect with how people are feeling and the actual stats on the ground. So the FBI today released their data for the third quarter of 2023. So they compare it to this time last year. And no one would deny, of course, that there was a surge during the COVID period. But violent crime is down 8%. Property crime is down 6.3%. It's at its lowest level since 1961. And I've been talking about the drop in the murder rates, not in Washington, D.C. That is an outlier. But in all these other major cities, like New York, where we are, in Chicago, in Los Angeles, and it's not getting any traction in that story. And I understand that crime is a what-you-feel problem. And it's definitely a what-you-read problem. Gallup has 77% of Americans, and this is across Democrats, Republicans, and independents, think that crime is going up. But you look at that FBI data and you think, how how is this disconnect, the chasm this large? Well, Dana, isn't that a lot like saying, well, inflation is going down. It's the same. Saying crime's coming down is like saying inflation is coming down. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's like saying that because both of those are stating facts. I have more to show you where Jesse Waters jumps in and it gets stunningly for lack of a better term, dumb. But first, to break down some of the facts for you, you heard Jessica mention them there, but the FBI released their quarterly report for Q3 of 2023, and what we found uh, is this. NBC News reports the FBI data, which compares crime rates in the third quarter of 2023 to the same period last year, found that violent crime dropped 8% while property crime fell 6.3% to what would be its lowest level since 1961. Murder plummeted in the United States in 2023 at one of the fastest rates of decline ever recorded. Asher found and every category of major crime except auto theft declined. So that is stunning and really hopeful. Things are looking up in Joe Biden's America <laughs> super quickly. After a once in a lifetime pandemic and economic downturn, we were able to get back to pre-pandemic conditions across 
so many of these massive, important uh, areas. And that wasn't a given, by the way. We've been talking about how economically people have been predicting a massive recession ever since Biden came into office. And then now we're seeing record-breaking economic numbers. Then on crime, we didn't know how long we'd be dealing with the post-pandemic crime spike, but already rates are plummeting at record speeds. That's good. Let's talk about it. Now, interestingly, you'll hear this idea that, yeah, sure, crime is coming down, but it's still so much higher than it was before the pandemic. I've already mentioned multiple times that that's just not true either. I mentioned that if the Q3 FBI report continues to play out, property crime will be hitting the lowest it's been since 1961. Then violent crime, we already have a more complete answer on from the full annual report uh, from 2022. NBC News also reports on this. The most recent annual report released in October covered 94% of the country and found that violent crime in 2022 fell back to pre-pandemic levels with murder dropping 6.1%. So the constant, relentless Fox News coverage that seeks to convince their viewers that Biden and Democrats are causing a spike in crime and destroying the country, it's complete and total nonsense. With that being said, Jesse Waters, he doesn't like data, okay? that too hard to understand. It hurts his brain. So he says, trust your gut. Here's more of the five. Well you also have to trust your gut. When I go out now, I take my wedding band off. I put it in my pocket because yeah. I want to get jacked. And I'm very you athletic. Think that they're gonna do that's you what, that's what you tell careful. your wife when you forget to put it back on. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> now, of all the things I said on the show, that's going to get me in trouble. But you need your watch on. Oh, shut up, Dana. <laughs> wow. Can I just say, the job of a public defender is to defend their client. They shouldn't have that job well, should... if it's... Change the topic then. Or change the title. Yeah. Crime is not down. That's like saying inflation is down when it's you like, go talk oh, to the FBI. as expensive as it was. No, they won't talk to me. And then for some reason at the end there, the Fox News host repeats the same ridiculous talking point that she already used. Yes, you can say both inflation and crime are down because uh, they are. <laughs> inflation was essentially zero for the last two months and crime is looking like based on an extrapolation of the 2023 Q3 numbers is back to pre-pandemic levels. And by the way, in my video yesterday discussing this subject, I was trying to explain this again from NBC News. 92% of Republicans, 78% of independents, and 58% of Democrats believe crime is rising, a Gallup survey showed. And I said that that's because of networks like Fox News showing videos of crime over and over on their shows and saying that crime is rising. And then also just the fact that the horrible stories get coverage while the good ones don't. But yesterday, I'll note that I realized after the fact, I said the horrible stories get coverage while the bad ones don't. Whoops. If I had said it correctly, then the point would have been a good one. Provocative stories about crime get a lot of views. They get a lot of attention. They keep people watching the TV, whereas coming on and talking about the specific data that reveals something different than the common consensus isn't exactly sexy. And I also think a lot of the media, even the outlets that aren't intentionally being dishonest for political purposes like Fox News is, are afraid to invalidate people's feelings about these issues. It's why the strong economic situation isn't covered as much as it should be. The economy and crime are uncomfortable issues to tell people they're wrong on, their experiences are wrong, or what their perception is might be wrong because it hits so close to home. And that's why I always make an effort to clarify that you're absolutely still experiencing, of course, real issues in relation to these subjects, and your experiences are real. It's just to point out that the idea that Joe Biden's destroying America is a completely ridiculous one. And then another interesting element of the crime conversation that I did want to mention was retail theft, specifically shoplifting. If you tune into right wing media, you'll notice a lot of talk about shoplifting. And again, it's supposed to why they're doing it is because it's supposed to prove that Democrats are horrible on crime. And by the way, are there some Democrats I think are approaching crime incorrectly? 100 percent. Absolutely. But. This is yet another issue that people are being misinformed on. The New York Times reports on this. The various sources of crime data from government agencies and private groups tell 
A consistent story, retail theft has not spiked nationwide in the past several years. If anything, it appears, this is crazy, if you watch right-wing media, appears less common in most of the country than it was before the pandemic. That's literally the opposite of what a lot of people in the country believe. And yesterday I showed a segment from Chris Hayes show where he walked through how networks like Fox News have twisted and distorted the facts on this issue to push their dishonest narrative. An example of this, how these storylines can get out of control is in relation to what's referred to as organized retail theft. And an organization called the National Retail Federation put out inaccurate information about organized retail theft that they had to outright retract the New York Times reports. The National Retail Federation had said that nearly half of the industry's $94.5 billion in missing merchandise in 2021 was a result of organized theft. It was likely, this is nuts, closer to 5%, experts say. Hmm, 50% or 5%, an extra zero was added. Big difference. But then faulty data gets out there and even after the entity that initiated that claim retracts the claim, people are already convinced and right-wing media barely reports on the retraction. Pretty stunning stuff. Before we go, don't forget to become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. If you're liking what you're seeing and hearing and you want more of it, lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get that daily bonus show plus follow me on threads at luke beasley official instagram at luke beasley official x at luke P. beasley and sign up for the beasley brief a daily morning newsletter that summarizes the previous day's events by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash brief and i'll talk to you all next time